I'm a bit worried. I feel a bit like the like the All Blacks uh, when the media builds them up and then the performance is not quite up to scratch. But anyway, I'll, I'll do my best. And it's great to see so many of you here, and I know from around a number of parts of the country. And I'm sure you're in for a really interesting day. So Fraser asked me to answer these three questions, but in particular to reference what we do at Bonnevere, how the board operates. And as Doug and Fraser have mentioned, there are five of us, Fraser and Shelley, Doug and Wendy, and myself, who, and I act as, as the chair, as Doug mentioned. So what is governance? And I like to think of it as getting up in the helicopter. It's not down in the weeds, it's big picture stuff. It's about looking to the future, determining direction, setting the compass. Where do we want to go and how are we going to know when we get there? And a number of you have probably heard talk of the three horizons, horizon one, two and three or the short, medium, and long-term horizons. And boards are increasingly being encouraged to think about horizon three. Look as far as you can about what's coming over the, that horizon that you need to get prepared for. And a number of people said, well, how many of us had um, a black swan event like the pandemic on our risk register? Very few in my experience. The other vital ingredient is the people that sit around the board table need to have the ability to make those big decisions. They've got to have the accountability that goes with that. So the board makes the big calls, the big decisions, and the buck stops there. So is governance really important? Well, I certainly think it is. And this list of four activities here, this is really what the direct, a board of directors should be doing. I've taken these four items out of the Institute of Directors Best Practice Guidelines they put together. So what I'm going to do is I'll work through each one of these and I'll relate it to how we work at Bonnevere. And it's clear to me that governance, when it's done well, brings a disciplined approach to the business and it should result in much better success. So let's go to the first one. Establishing purpose. This is our why. And I've heard Doug talk about the importance of your why on many occasions. Why are we in the business? Well, our answer is simple. And you've already got a sense of that from what Fraser said when he stood up here. So our aim is to lead by developing the farm of the future. Really simple. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is to really get to grips with your purpose. We certainly didn't get there in one easy discussion, I can assure you. We had many discussions. And we thrashed questions like, should we stay farming in this tough environment here in Marlborough? Should we go somewhere else? Should we get bigger? How much bigger? What's really important in life? And what gets Fraser excited when he gets out of bed in the morning? So that's where we landed. And having landed with that clear purpose, you can see that you can then go on and build a plan to 
take you in the, in the right direction. We've set the compass and now it's about measuring our progress. So the second area on that list of four is setting the values and the culture. And this is how we work together. So a lot of our work is done sitting around the table at meetings. We have about five meetings a year. And we do get out on the farm as well. But if you're like me, increasingly when you go to a farm these days, you spend quite a bit of time either in the, in the house or in the office. And you're looking at information. So we get round the table and there's a couple of things I really want to emphasise here. All views are really valuable. And Wendy and Shelley participate fully in our meetings. No one dominates and we all work hard to listen to each other. And yes, Doug behaves. <laughs> He's getting really good actually. <laughs> and there's a real ri richness in having that diversity of views and perspectives. I remember on one occasion, and it was we were talking about, we are in discussion around the purpose, and Shelley spoke up and she said, she was talking about observing what Fraser was doing and she just opened up and spoke honestly about the way she was seeing Fraser, the pressure he was under at the particular time and that made us all really stop and think. Fraser's view obviously carries significant weight because he's the driving force out on the ground and the rest of us are there to provide a supportive and encouraging um, background. We don't try and be controlling or suffocating at all. Anyway, it would be pretty difficult to, to control these guys. They really know where they want to go. Fraser's got his own set of values. Then you see he's introduced the team to you all this morning. He likes to create a friendly, supportive environment. People are expected to perform, get the work done, and the team then takes pride in their achievements. We pay well. hope that's right, guys. <laughs> Time off is encouraged. And there's a real, you've already heard about it, there's a real learning environment encouraged and we work on building resilience in the system. So m my role as chair and independent is a bit like a referee and a guiding hand. And when the hard questions need to be asked, I feel a responsibility to make sure that that happens. I also work with the team to create an environment where Everybody feels safe to say what they want to, they, they feel uh, that they can make a really honest contribution in the conversation. It's okay to disagree. And in fact, in many of the teams that I've been in, some of the people that I've valued most highly are the people who've said to me in a discussion, Barry, I don't agree with that. So you stop and you say, well, tell me why. And you learn. So we don't just sit around and, and agree and nod heads together. We really have good, serious discussions about the issues that matter. One of the tough issues that we had to deal with and there's still work to be done is the succession issue. And it's really important that Fraser and Shelley have a clear pathway to their future. And as you'll appreciate, issues like that, they don't go away. They've got to be faced into. You'll see on this slide here, outsiders welcome. This is a special feature of what I call the Avery Way. They welcome outsiders 
and actually invite people in, people who they think can help them. And Fraser's already mentioned that. In my view, this takes some real guts and humility to invite people in and open up to talk about the business with strangers. And it's about that willingness to learn. But often those uh, arrangements lead on to partnerships where together both parties are invested in finding the right answer, whatever it might be. And you'll see plenty of evidence today when we get out on the farm. And you, it's already there in the handout. You see all the people who are involved with this business in these partnership arrangements. So the third area on that list, holding management to account, really is code for assessing Fraser's performance. And the board's ultimately accountable for performance. And in my experience, the most important thing a board does is appoint the CEO. And having the right CEO just makes the board's role that much easier. And as you'll see today, and the judges have already recognised, we have a terrific CEO in Fraser. And I just want to point out too the, the difference between governance and management. It's not the board's role to get involved in management. But it is the board's role to be able to assess the performance of management which takes us on to the next slide. And you'll be familiar with the, the saying, what gets measured gets managed. So we encourage plenty of measurement. And again, if you look in that handout, you'll see what gets measured in this uh, Bonavere operation. And we're setting more targets and doing more comparison of where we sit relative to others. So I know Fraser and Greg Shepherd are working hard at building better measures um, in each of these categories that we've got up here. So one of the things, what do our staff do with their time? How, how much do we actually record what our people are spending their time at? What's our carbon footprint? and our net emissions of greenhouse gases. And it was great, Sam, uh, Sam McIver, to see that research funded by Beef and Lamb came out the other day, just showing the net emissions from sheep and beef farms are a lot less than a lot of people would have realised because of all the planting that's taken place and the planting that exists on our sheep and beef farms. So you need to really uh, catch up on that research that's just come out. But that's all about measurement. Biodiversity, what have we got? And is it getting better or worse? We're pretty good at measuring animal performance on average, but not so good in terms of individual animals. And what about animal welfare? What can we measure? I hear Fraser talking about having happy animals. How do we know whether they're happy or not? What can we measure? And these are the sorts of things that we need to be telling our story more. And Fraser, again, has already mentioned this. One of the great things about today is there's a great story to be told, to be spread around that our urban cousins need to understand. And we're not doing enough as a sector, communicating with our urban cousins. The sort of work that, um, that the um, Perium sisters, Sarah and Ellie do, you know, it's wonderful getting those stories out there, using social media and so on. And you'll see in Fraser's Golden Nuggets there, he talks about the importance of communication. And we just can't do enough. I never think you can over-communicate. In the financial space, 
um, we have a budget, like any other business, and we monitor our performance as we go through the year. And we don't, we don't try and stick religiously to the budget, but when there's significant variances from the budget, there's a lot of questions asked. We know why certain things have happened and we understand what that might mean for the future. So we think more about what's coming down the line rather than looking back over our shoulder because the past is history. Some time ago, we went through the process of transfer of the financial control from father to son, from Doug to Fraser. And it's probably fair to say it was harder for Doug than it was for Fraser. And we were, we were all very impressed with how quickly Fraser got, to, uh, got up to speed with the financial management of the business. And the one I love, that last one there, farming system fit for the environment. This is what Fraser and Doug before him, this is what they're really good at. They don't fight against the summer dry environment in this part of the world. They build their livestock systems to fit and they make money when the feed's available. In my view, this really is the secret source of Bonavere. This is the secret source of the Avery Way. And I learned about this uh, many years ago at Lincoln University. We had a wonderful education in farm management. We called it whole farm management. Today I think it's called systems thinking. It's how all the pieces come together and the overall result is greater than the sum of the various parts. I had some experience in South America and I used to see over there there were a lot of specialists in animals and plants and vets and there were very few people like we have here in New Zealand. Our farmers are, are really good at this whole farm management. Um, it's not the case in other parts of the world. But this is something that you will see that Fraser really shines at. This is the, the final uh, in the four. Um, that the, the board sets the tone for risk and compliance. And again, I've made a bit of a list here. But this is really about doing the right thing and measuring progress. Health and safety is obviously really important and I remember one day uh, I was in the farm truck with Fraser we were driving around Bonavere going along the track and we were coming up to go over a rise and there's a drum sitting in the middle of the track and I said what's the drum there for and he said well people coming the other way they're coming up the same rise so hopefully they'll keep left and we won't have a head on because we can't see them, they can't see us. Well, that we're really smart thinking from a health and safety point of view. We've covered, covered a number of aspects of this um, earlier, but you'll see a link back to the culture and the values that I talked about earlier, which is quite a neat way to finish. What's the term they use? today the circular economy which is another part of the the Avery way just finally in, in summary hopefully you'll have a bit of an appreciation of how the board of directors at Bonavere operate and what we're aiming to achieve and I'd just like to close by just putting a bit of a challenge out there to any of you who are thinking about getting involved in governance or getting on boards you know and you think about your local community there are lots of opportunities to get involved in governance so don't hold back I didn't get my governance career started until it was later in my career and I should have started earlier so I'd encourage you to get started earlier because it really is uh, an enjoyable um, 
aspect of further development. And I've just put my email address up there. If any of you want to ask me a question about anything or you want to contact me about anything, don't hesitate uh, to make contact.